Blood pressure measurement allows healthcare providers to evaluate the forces exerted by blood against an individual's vessel walls. Blood pressure can be measured manually or by using an electronic blood pressure monitor. The brachial artery is the most common artery used for blood pressure measurement. Once applied, the blood pressure cuff is inflated to a pressure above the patient's estimated systolic pressure. This pressure can be determined by palpation or from the patient's previous blood pressure recordings. As pressure is slowly released, the first clear tapping sound heard, or Karotkoff sound, indicates the systolic blood pressure. Systolic pressure indicates the maximal pressure exerted on the vessels with each ventricular contraction. The cuff continues to deflate and the tapping sound disappears as the fifth Karotkoff sound occurs. This final sound is considered the diastolic pressure. The diastolic pressure indicates the minimal pressure exerted against the vessel wall at all times. The combination of the systolic and diastolic pressures comprise the blood pressure measurement. Select the best site for measuring blood pressure, BP. Do not apply the cuff to an extremity that has an IV catheter, an arteriovenous shunt, trauma, inflammation, or disease or a cast or a bulky bandage. Also, avoid an extremity ipsilateral to recent breast or axillary surgery. Select the appropriate size BP cuff. Estimate the size using inspection or measure the circumference of the extremity. Ensure that the bladder cuff width is approximately 40% of the circumference of the arm measured at a point midway between the olecranon and acromion and that the bladder cuff length covers 80% to 100% of the arm circumference. For children through adolescence, available cuffs should include pediatric cuffs of varying sizes, a standard adult cuff, a large adult cuff, and a thigh cuff. Neonatal and infant cuffs are available in a variety of sizes. Do not use a cuff that is smaller than appropriate. Doing so can lead to false high BP readings. Do not use a cuff that is wider or larger than appropriate. Doing so may produce false low readings. Place a child in a sitting position. Place an infant in the supine position. Keep a child who is unable to sit up for BP measurement recumbent. Keep a child who is critically ill in a position that maintains hemodynamic stability. When taking a BP measurement in a child who is supine, support the arm on a pillow to ensure it is at the level of the heart. Obtaining a blood pressure value using auscultation. Palpate the brachial artery and place the cuff so the midline of the bladder is over the arterial pulsation. Wrap and secure the cuff snugly around the bare upper arm. Remove clothing with sleeves. Rolling up a sleeve may cause a tourniquet effect around the upper arm. Clean and warm the bell and diaphragm of the stethoscope. Place the ear pieces of the stethoscope in the ears angled forward. Gently place the bell of the stethoscope over the brachial artery pulsation just above the antecubital fossa but below the lower edge of the cuff. Avoid placing excessive pressure on the brachial artery because doing so may affect Karotkoff sounds. Stabilize the child's extremity to limit movement. Inflate the cuff rapidly. Avoid overinflating the BP cuff. If necessary, estimate systolic blood pressure, SBP, using palpation before obtaining SBP by auscultation. Partially open the valve, deflate the bladder at 2 to 3 millimeters mercury per second, and listen to the brachial pulsation. As pressure in the cuff decreases, note the pressure reading on the manometer for the first occurrence of Karotkoff sounds, K1. K1 indicates SBP. Note the pressure reading when the Karotkoff sounds are muffled, K4 and when the sounds disappear, K5. Karotkoff sounds can often be heard through the entire period of cuff deflation. Absence of sounds, K5, denotes diastolic BP. After the last Karotkoff sounds are heard, continue to deflate the cuff slowly. If sounds are heard until the BP cuff is fully deflated, repeat the BP measurement with less pressure on the head of the stethoscope. If a very low K5 continues, record muffling of sounds, K4 as the diastolic BP.
Record measurements for the systolic BP, diastolic BP, and the mean arterial BP. If the values are abnormal, repeat the measurement after a brief rest period. Obtaining a blood pressure value with an oscillometric device. If the oscillometric device allows, adjust the settings to a mode that is appropriate for the child's size and the type of cuff. Palpate the appropriate artery, brachial or radial in the arm, popliteal, dorsalis pedis, or posterior tibial in the leg, and place the cuff so the midline of the bladder is over the arterial pulsation. Wrap and secure the cuff snugly around the bare extremity. Activate the oscillometric device to initiate the BP measurement. Stabilize the child's extremity to limit movement. Record measurements for the systolic BP, diastolic BP, and the mean arterial BP. If the BP measurement is elevated, measure BP using the auscultatory method. If the oscillometric device is used for ongoing BP monitoring, set up and activate the appropriate alarms.